everybody, and welcome to another Midweek Manor Bible Study with Christ Church Apostolic. My name is Pastor James. I'm the executive pastor here at Christ Church, and we are so excited for the opportunity to be able to worship with you through the learning and the education of the Word of God. What's so important to us is not just being a church that prides itself on praise and on worship and on community development and education. But we pride ourselves in, in being a people that are lovers of the Word of God. The Word of God is our oxygen. It's our life. It is what we need in order to be the kingdom citizens that God has called us to be. Remember, the Bible says that everything else will pass away, but His Word, God's Word, will remain standing forever. Do me a favor if you haven't already, guys, lean on that share button. I see some of you coming in now. God bless you, family. God, glad that you are here. But I need you to share, get this word out, let somebody know again that we are live right now on Facebook and on YouTube. So we need you to get the word out and let somebody know that it is time to learn of God's word. During the month of May, we have been engaged in an amazing teaching series entitled The Current, dealing not just with the awareness of the presence of God, but also dealing with understanding the direction in which what God is or who God is flowing on. We want to know, we want to be discerning of the presence of God. We want to know what God is in and what he is not. What is the will of God for a moment? What is the will of God for my life? Remember that we've been discussing that every area in my life and every life has a current. God has a will for every area of my life. It is my job to engage with God through prayer, through the learning of his word, to ensure that I am in his current and that I don't make the fatal decision of flowing against the current of God. Now tonight, I'm excited to be able to share this word with you. But tonight, I am not teaching. I am learning along with you. Pastor James, why, why aren't you teaching tonight? Because the worst leader that you could ever follow is a leader that will refuse to learn from somebody else. I've shared on time and time before with our leadership team, that the moment that you refuse to learn or the moment that you stop learning is the moment that you have disqualified yourself from leading. So I want to be a student of God's word just like you, and I want to grow in God's word just like you. So tonight, our own minister, Shalandon Walker, is going to be ministering the word of God, teaching on the current of God, how to flow with the Holy Spirit. Now, as we are inching toward uh, Pentecost Sunday, as we are inching toward the infilling of the Holy Spirit that came on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, it's not enough just to be able to, how come and, and, and all that stuff, but you don't know how to follow the Holy Spirit whenever he is leading you and the, and the dynamics that go along with that. It's so much. I'm excited to share this word with you. I know Minister Shalandon is as well. Again, lean on that share button. Let somebody know that we are live right now, and God's word is getting ready to come from his manservant. God bless your family. I'll be back here in just a moment to recap with you the word of God, and we'll give, and we'll, get, and we'll pray, and we'll go. God bless your family. See you here in just a moment. My topic today, I want to talk about following the leading of the Holy Ghost, right? And the most important thing I wanted to show you is the Holy Ghost is the single most important power in earth and eternity. And uh, without him, we can accomplish nothing. Without him, we can accomplish nothing. And see, as you know, someone may, someone you may know may feel this way, uh, that, that, to, to put all their efforts into something, to build some things, to put their hands to things and actually create and build, but to wash it all fall to ashes, all because, all because, right? You did not get permission from the Holy Ghost. 
or you did not involve the Holy Ghost. And how many of us fall in that category? I know I do sometimes. I know I do sometimes. And so I wanted to bring to life and actually talk to you about that. So I'm going to speak to you about the importance of walking in the Holy Spirit and, and addressing the spirit of independence and rebellion and how you deal with that. So the topic of my, 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 our discussion today is going to be, it's going to be roll tide. Stay in the current. I know a lot of, a lot of my sports fans are like, what does he talk about? Roll tide, but stay in the current. And our text is going to be found. Our text is going to be found in John, the gospel of John 7, 38 through 39. And let's go, let's go right there real quick. And it says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the spirit that they may believe on him who should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. Right. So let's get into our first topic. Who is the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is uh, the spirit of God, is the spirit of God um, that exercises power. Right. Of Jesus Christ in the creation and redemption. The Holy Spirit, once again, is the spirit of God that exercises the power of Jesus Christ in creation and redemption. And let me show you what I mean about creation and redemption. Let's go to Genesis one verse one through four. What does it say here? It says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void. Uh huh. And darkness was a, a, upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water and the face of the waters. And the God and God said, let there be light. And God saw that that the light was good and God divided the light from the darkness. This is the first mentioned principle. I don't want you to uh, actually get away from this. This is the first mentioned principle of the redemptive work of the Holy Spirit establishing order amidst chaos, out of chaos. So one of the things that God showed you, if you want to understand of what he came to do, what the Holy Spirit came to do, right? It came to carry out the work of the work of God. It is the power. It is the power in creation. It says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void, and, uh, form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, this point right here, he said, and and the spirit of God, right, moved on the face of the waters. Uh huh. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Uh huh. And God said, God saw that the light was good. Right. And God divided the light from the darkness. How is this redemptive? How is this redemptive? We all know we was born in sin and shaping in iniquity and darkness. Right. When it comes to when you look at the word darkness in the Bible, it's always talking about it's always talking about sin or ignorance or or, or unrevealed. You, you see what I'm saying? And so the light always exposes who is the light. Jesus Christ, the light always exposes what's underneath. So when God reveals himself, right. When God reveals himself, there's a light. There's a there. There is light that comes in. There is a light that comes in. Right. And they say a light goes off. Right. When God reveals himself. And so with this redemptive work, with God saying that, let there be light. Right. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit carried out those words. And it was light. And it was like it was the power behind it. It was a power. Now, understand, this is who your work. This is who the Holy Spirit is. He is testifying of the truth of Jesus Christ and the truth of God. So let's let's move to our next our next one. The Holy Spirit, who's someone that actually draws nonbelievers. He draws nonbelievers. The Holy Spirit draws nonbelievers. John, uh, John six and forty four says, no, no one can come to the father unless the a father who sent me draws him and and I say and I will raise him upon the last day. Listen, God is revealed. 
Right. It's the Holy Spirit that draws you. It's the Holy Spirit that 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 pulls you that pulls you in. Right. It's it, it, it. You hear the word of God, just like just like let there be light. And it was light. the Holy Spirit has to carry that out when God says, hey, I want to draw Shalandon. Right. God says Shalandon, the Holy Spirit pricks me. It pricks me and it pricks my heart. I have to come towards God. Now, it's up to me to make the choice if I'll serve him or not. It's up to you to make the choice if you'll serve him or not. But the Holy Spirit is he's he 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 is the one that draws. He's the one that draws. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. It's a counselor. Um, it's a helper. It's an intercessor. It's an advocate. It's a strengthener. It's a standby. Um, and he is your advantage. The Bible says in John 16 and 7, John 16 and 7. However, this is what Jesus is saying. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth. When I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you, uh uh-huh, for you that I go away because I, if I do not go away, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, that's what he's talking about, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you into, into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be close to be close to you and fellowship with you. Now, understand, understand with all these things being said that the Holy Ghost. Right. He's a comforter. He's an intercessor. He 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 he, uh, he's a standby. He's a reserve. Understand this is who God wants you to be in relationship with with him. And he wants to give you his spirit. For him to dwell inside of you. This is why it's important to move in this day and age when you have these things going on in these day and age. And we understand all the pressures of this world, all the peril. But you have to have an overcomer. His spirit is a comforter. Right. It's a counselor. And just imagine it says it it says um, he's given you the advantage when you have the Holy Spirit. He's given you the advantage. So how 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 do you think it would be? If God will give you wisdom before you go into the boardroom and, and and sometimes you could prepare, but God can drop a nugget and tell you how this works and what to say and when to say certain things. That will be a million dollar idea that can change the world beside you preparing. So sometimes you got to understand you have the power of an ancient wisdom that's wanting to dwell on the inside of you, which is the spirit of God. There's no other power. There's no other there's no other higher power than than the spirit of God. Right. In Jesus Christ, there's no other power. There's no other power that's higher than that. So um, 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 and, 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 and when we go back to the initial part of my text in the middle in, in the beginning of the verse uh, of John of, uh, of John seven and thirty eight. He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture that said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, the Holy Ghost is being is being used symbolically with water. He said, but this he spake of the spirit in verse thirty nine, which they that believe on him shall receive the Holy Ghost uh, for the shall receive for the Holy Ghost is not yet given. Understand when you talk when Jesus was talking about when Jesus was talking about the Holy Ghost in this particular passage. He was using uh, water as a uh, as symbolism, water as symbolism. So therefore, this is the anchor of my message. I really wanted to get into this portion. Um, and I, I thank I thank God for this portion. Um, what are the rivers of living water? The rivers of living water are miracles that the Holy Ghost performs in you and through you. R- rivers, springs and streams sustain and bring new life. That they that that because they're always moving. You understand what I'm saying? Because of they're always moving, they're always sustaining life. They're always bringing new life because it's always moving. So how does that relate to you? How does it relate to you? So okay, when I'm giving somebody an encouraging word, right? That God has given me, 
under the unction of the Holy Spirit, they may have a dry and dead situation that they're dealing with. Right. And I, I and I give them a word that may brighten up their day that may even change the course of their life. That's the living water. You may you may go out and feed the homeless. They may be dealing with a dry and dead situation. Right. With you feed just the simple act of you showing the love of God from the power of the Holy Ghost working through you may change their whole life. These are rivers of living water. It's not just for speaking in tongues. It's not just for speaking in tongues. It's it's about the power of the Holy Ghost. It's about the manifestation of the Holy Ghost, about the power of deliverance. Uh huh. It's about it's about the power to prophesy. It's about the power to build up and encourage people. It's about that power. Understand, it's not just for speaking in tongues. It's not just for speaking in tongues. If you want to know why it's why it's most important, it says you have a power to witness. You have the power now. Before you couldn't do that without the Holy Ghost. Now, here we go. It says, now Jesus uh, must be revealed and glorified before you can connect with the Holy Ghost. Right. He must be revealed in you. And in, 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 uh, in, in 39, he said he must be glorified. Now, understand when Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus went to the cross. Right. And he would uh, uh, he was dead, buried. And resurrected, he was glorified. Now, in order for you to receive the Holy Ghost, in order for you to come in a relationship with the Holy Ghost, you must glorify God. It's just as simple as that. When God is glorified, the power follows. When G- when you begin to glorify Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost follows. Acts one and eight says, "But you shall receive power." Right, right. Now, hold on. You shall receive power. Now, let's look at that. The ability, the efficiency and the might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Right. Not you have the ability, but if the Holy Ghost have the ability, you shall receive power, the ability, the efficiency and the might when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, to to the ends of the earth, the very bounds of the earth. Understand, understand, when you glorify God, this is the very simple principle of invoking the Holy Ghost, and you want to see the Holy Ghost move in your service, begin to glorify God. Now, I'm not saying you wait on the praise team to glorify God. I'm saying you open up your mouth. He said, if any man thirsty, if any man thirsts, Come to me and drink. That means you open your mouth so he can pour in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what God wants to do for you. That's what God wants to do for you. And uh, 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 and, and, and three, the Holy Ghost is an evangelist. The Holy Ghost is an evangelist. He comes and it says it said he comes to evangelize. He comes to evangelize earth for Jesus Christ. Right. And John. In John 16 and 8, 8 through 9, it says, and he comes and he will convict and convince, convict. And that means reprove. He will convict and convince the world and bring and, and bring demonstration to it about sin and righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God and, and about judgment about sin, because they do not believe in me. Trust or rely and adhere to me. Understand that word, that word reprove in the King James Version, it means to convince or expose. It means to convince or expose, right? It's a law term. This is a law term. And so what it means is uh, the word is used in a law term and it speaks of the office of, of summoning evidence, of bringing up evidence. It says he shall convince or rather uh, he shall put to silence every adversary of Jesus Christ in his case. The Holy Spirit is the one that 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 opens a closed mind. We can't do it. I've I've heard so many times. Oh, I want my husband to say. Oh, I want my wife to be saved. I want my children to be saved. And I want this, that, and the third. La, 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 la. And I'm trying to change them. And I'm trying to do this. And I feel like I'm fighting by myself. And I'm doing this, that, and the third. And, and it's not working. Right. But it's the Holy Spirit that has to do the work. Not you. It's not about you. It's about the Holy Spirit. 
It says in Zechariah, it said, it said in uh, Zechariah uh, 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 four and six, it says, and then he answered and spoke and say, this is the word of the Lord unto uh, Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, say, not by might, nor by power, nor not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's by his spirit. Understand that once you get that. You will not feel empty. You will not. You will always feel fulfilled when you allow the Holy Ghost to move through you. It's not about you. It's about God using you to move through you. It's not about your agenda. It's about his agenda. See, he's evangel. He's trying to. He wants to evangelize the earth through you. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Now we're talking about the supreme, the top. He wants to work through you. Right. God has intended you to flow. Always remember that. God has intended for you to flow in the supernatural and not mediocrity. He, he did not make you to be a mediocre person, right? He did not make you to be a mediocre person. When he's giving you the Holy Ghost, he did not intend that for you. Mark, uh, let's go to Mark. Mark 16, 17 through 18. And these, sign, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues and they will pick up serpents in their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Understand, let's 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 break the scripture down. It said these signs will accompany them who believe. So if I have the Holy Ghost, and by faith, I thank God for the Holy Ghost that I receive the Holy Ghost when I preach or when I teach. That is fine. That is good to preach the word. It is fine. But what should follow is the demonstration, the signs. The signs. How can I preach? How can I preach the gospel? But I'm not affecting my community. How can I preach the gospel? But there's no deliverance. How can I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? This is the biggest question for me for the latest for the latest preachers and teachers and all that. How can you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without preaching deliverance? You can't. His name means deliverer. Jesus's name means deliverer. So so these signs should follow by the spirit. These signs should follow speaking in a new uh, a new language that you've never that you've never uh, had access to. But to speak in a new language fluently. That's a miracle from God. That's a miracle from God. Oh, my God. And this is how God wants to work through us. This is how God wants to work through us. This part right here. Now we, we really want to talk about the flow and getting into the flow. Now that we know who the Holy Spirit is and what he's come to do, it's, it, it's time to talk about the flow, the power and the flow. Right now, I want you to take notes on these keys right here. Key number one. Right. The key to the power and the flow of the Holy Spirit is to trust and rely. Right. To trust and rely on, on the Holy Spirit for everything. It's to trust and rely on the Holy Spirit for everything. Jesus said about sin in John, uh, John 16 and, and, and nine said about sin because they do not believe in me. Trust, trust in me or rely or adhere to me. Right. This is one of the things that God is saying. He's saying I, they can't they can't receive the Holy Ghost because they don't believe in me. They don't trust. They don't rely. They don't adhere, adhere. So please, these four points of criteria. Right. These are four points of criteria that must be met before you can flow in the in the Holy Ghost. Right. First, you got to be spirit, spirit filled, because if you're not spirit filled then you're none of his. So if you're spirit filled, this is number one. It says. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believing, believe in who he is, believe that he is Lord and that you're not. Just believe and know that you can't do anything without him. Number two. Number two. Number two is trust in Jesus Christ. The word trust, it means to make yourself vulnerable. And when you begin to trust in Jesus and somebody who's guarding you, like I said before, is is. That per you're trusting this person with the most vulnerable aspects of your life. So if you're weak in this area, 
but you feel like I have to go here and the spirit, the Holy Spirit is drawing me to this area, but I'm weak in this area, God. I don't know what to do. That's why you trust that Jesus is going to make a way and provide provision for you. This is what the Holy Spirit does. Number three, number three, rely on Jesus Christ. Rely on him. When you pray, you, you sometimes you may be going through a situation and there, there's things that you have in your power to do. But it's not getting done right. Right. It's not it's, it's not being accomplished. It's not being accomplished. But what we have to do is sometimes we pray and say, God, I'm relying on you for this. This very thing. I'm relying on you. Why? Because he's trustworthy. Right. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not only that, let's point number four. This was a hard one. This was a hard one. I know a lot of people have uh, 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 trouble with this sometimes. And I, I know I, I, I struggle with this sometimes. I know a lot of people do. Uh, but adhering, adhering to Jesus Christ, adhere to Jesus Christ. Point number four, listen to what he has to say. Right. Listen to what he has to say. If he if he's saying something, if he's saying something that is so clear, it can't be misunderstood, then do what God is saying. Just listen to what he has to say. Listen. I'm not going to go all deep into it, but listen to what the Holy Ghost has to say. Right. If you cannot, if you cannot meet any of these criteria, right, you will never flow in the maximum power. Of the Holy Ghost. You will never flow in the maximum power of the Holy Ghost. If you can't, if you can't meet any of these criteria, any of these four criteria, you can forget it. You can forget it. And so what I want to do is encourage you to begin to look at the flowing in the supernatural, walking in the supernatural of your calling. God did not intend you to uh, walk in mediocrity as a saint of God. Right now, it says it says in, in, in Acts one and eight, but ye shall receive power, the ability the efficiency, right? When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, right? But this is, this is the thing. This is the thing about adhering and flowing. You shall receive power when you magnify God. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, this helps, this helps you flow, right? But then we go to Corinthians. Let's go to Corinthians. Corinthians 14, 14 and one. It said, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. What does that mean? What does that mean? You can desire the gifts that the Holy Ghost gives. So if it's supernatural gifts, which it is supernatural gift that the Holy Ghost gives, right? You can desire these gifts. These are, this is the will of God for your life, for you to operate in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It's to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's what I mean by staying in the current, staying in the current, moving with the Holy Ghost. However the Holy Ghost moves, then you move, right? Not you move on your own power, but you move under the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost. It, 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 listen, God will not withhold anything from you. If you desire this gift, you like, Lord, I want to, Lord, help me to interpret, interpret tongues. I want to know what th this person is saying in the spirit. I want to hear what this person is saying. And I want a clear understanding from you, God. I want a clear understanding from this dream. Show me, teach me, talk to me, reveal it to me of, of what to say. Now, this is biblical, right? Let, let, now, listen, it's according to God's will. He told you, to, he told you to desire it. So now you can add, right? And it says, in Matthew 7 and 11, he said, if, if if you then being evil know to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give you good things, uh, give, give good things to those who ask, who ask him? Ask him according to his will. He'll give it to you. This is what I mean by relying and trusting him. See, you can't do these things if you can't adhere to those four different points that I gave you a little bit earlier. This is a part of flowing in the Holy Ghost. Now, that was key number. That was key number two. Key number three. Key number three. Key number three. You must know that you are a child of God. It is your legal right to flow in the Holy Spirit. All right. All of the saints of God should be flowing in the Holy Ghost. 
All the saints of God should be walking in the current of the Holy Ghost. All the saints of God. This is not reserved for the prophet. Let me say that again. This is not just reserved for the prophet. I know in my culture, a lot of times oh, I can't do that. I can't cast out demons because I don't have that gift. Actually, these signs shall follow the him that believe. So it's if you believe in God and you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, that don't mean you could pass off the buck to somebody else or wait for them to come do it. You have to move. You have to move. You have to move under the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ. Right. Listen, it's all saints. All of the saints of God should be flowing in the Holy Spirit. It's not just up to the person to get up and prophesy. Listen, all should prophesy. Under the Holy Ghost, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, all, not some, all the saints. Understand what I'm saying. Understand what I'm saying. I know some people may be like, I don't know about all of that. And that's OK. But understand, get some revelation from God. Ask God to show you. Right. His true intent for you, his true intention for you to move under the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, we got to have these I'm write these points down. I want to go to these points in order to flow in the Holy Ghost. You must you must you must. Have extreme obedience. In other words, you must have extreme obedience uh, when it comes to the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is speaking, and the Holy Ghost is moving you in a certain way. You must have uh, uh, extreme obedience. In other words, that means just shut up and flow. Yeah, that means just shut up and flow. It means just to shut up and flow. Listen, understand, you must obey the Holy Ghost to the highest degree of obedience. Now, write this down. I want you to get your notes and write this down. Right. There's four points right here that I want you to get. Point number one. Point number one. Obey without hesitation. Obey without hesitation. Listen, you must obey without hesitation. If God is telling you to do something, it's not time for you to sit and think about, Lord, am I going to get this done or am I going to be able to get over here and, and make this happen? No. It's time to move, move without hesitation. He who hesitate, miss the boat. Don't miss the boat. This is what this is what we call staying in the current. Move without hesitation. Point number two, point number two, obey with urgency right away, sir. Yes, Lord. Right away, sir. A a a this is this is the service that God wants you to give to him. Not not to think about it, not to debate with God. Right. Not just to hesitate, but to move with urgency. That's what he wants you to move with, to move with urgency. Please, please, if I could warn or if I could cry out to anybody, please move with urgency. Point number three. Point number three. He said, uh, be quiet and listen to instruction. There's so many times I've watched and I've seen I've actually been a part of it to where I was moving into something or doing things without the without the leading of the Holy Spirit, without walking in the Holy Spirit. And it's so many times that people are relying on you to be listening to God as a believer, as a child of God. You must listen to what the Holy Spirit is. Remember, it's your advantage. So if somebody's coming down that aisle and they're needing prayer or if somebody's calling you and they're needing prayer. Let them talk, but begin to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you on what to pray for, because the spirit know what it should pray for. Right. It's, it'll show you. It'll give you what you need. It'll give you the wisdom. It'll give you words of knowledge. He'll give you words of wisdom. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Be quiet and listen to the instruction. Just shut up again. Shut up and flow. Shut up and flow. Roll tight. Roll tight. Now, so, 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 and the last point, the last point and point number four, point number four, this was a real hard one, is to die to self. You have to deny yourself just because you have an agenda doesn't mean it's God's agenda. Uh-huh. Don't get upset when God changes the script. Don't get upset. Deny yourself. Die to self. One of the hardest things in this culture is, to, is fighting with is the spirit of independence. And the spirit of rebellion. Oh, oh, I can't forget the spirit of narcissism, being selfish, being so caught up in yourself, so ingrained with yourself. You can't flow in the Holy Ghost because you want to do what you want to do. 
God is saying right now in this season, there's time out for this. He wants to move through you and with you. Listen, understand, deny yourself. This is how you flow to the maximum ability of the Holy Ghost. Step back and allow the Holy Ghost to move. Give you the information that you need before you go and, and, and do warfare, before you go and try to help somebody. Let the Holy Ghost move before you. Understand, understand that. Now I'm about to wrap up. Now I'm about to wrap up, but I want to leave you with this last little analogy, this last little analogy and, and understand what it is that God is trying to do. God is trying to do. Understand there is a law a called buoyancy in the natural realm. There's a law called buoyancy, just the same in the spirit. Now understand why this is so critical about flowing in the Holy Ghost. As, as, as I'm coming to this close, it's about staying in the current. In the current, in the current of the Holy Ghost, there is a buoyancy law at work, flowing in the spirit, right? There's a law of buoyancy. What is the law of buoyancy? All right. So we know the Holy Spirit is water. Right. Symbolic for water. That's that's what we already established. Right. Yeah. So um, um, our mass of water. Let's just take example of a pool. We have a big, huge Olympic size pool. There's water in there. Right. And we take the mass or an object. We'll take a, a mass or an object and we put it in. Right. And now understanding that the mass or the object is not heavier. It's not it's not outweighing the body of water that we're putting it in. So therefore, it floats. That's the law. So the gravity, of course, we pushed it down on, but there is a buoyancy that pushes back and, and allows it to flow. What does that mean? Well, how does that relate to you? Well, just look at it just like this. We sometimes outside of the pool, have you ever tried to lift your friend up? It is very heavy to lift their dead weight up and to move them, right? But inside the pool, you're able to lift them up. You're actually able to just use your finger and push them across. Why? Because the water is doing the work. That's what the Holy Spirit is set here to do. When you have problems that you're going through, you're not able to 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 get things in order and your child, everything you touch is falling apart. Begin to glorify God. Allow the Holy Spirit to come down and put in the work. Glorify God and and God will act, hear what I'm saying. Faith without works is dead. Your works is glorifying God and getting in the position and doing what God said do. Right. It's that's your work. And when you begin to work, the Holy Spirit begins to work. Wow, man, I, I pray that you were blessed by the word of God tonight, the current of God, the understanding of flowing with the Holy Spirit. I shared this on Sunday, and that is um, while God has a current for every area of your life. And for every life as well, it is important that we do not compare and contrast one current of God with the next. What are you saying, Pastor James? I'm saying that oftentimes what we can do is we can get so caught up in the last move of God that it hinders us from being able to see the next manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And I want us to be such a discerning people. And such a growing people that we become a people of the presence. That's my desire for us. That's my prayer for us, that we become a people of the presence. Let's pray on that. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, thank you for your word tonight that was brought by Minister Shalandon. Thank you, oh God, for teaching us on the current of God, on your current, how to flow with the Holy Spirit. Father, we, we not only want to be a people that that understand that you are that you are flowing, but not flow with you. So, Father, I'm asking you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would guide us through an understanding and the education of your current. Let us be a people that are committed to the value system of your presence. And, Father, I ask you that ultimately you would get all the glory, get all the honor and all the praise out of our lives. And, Father, we'll bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, family, if you are blessed by the word of God or anything related to Christ Church Apostolic, do me a favor and sow where you grow. This is good ground. We're in the process of, of building up a state-of-the-art studio that will be a blessing to not just you, but to be a blessing to our community as well. We're in the process of 
being more involved and engaged with young people and our community and, and, and just so much more, but we need the resources to be able to do that. Do me a favor right now. Sow it those three ways that you see at the bottom of the screen. I promise you that you'll see the blessing of God as a result of you sowing into good ground. I pronounce his blessing upon you. This is your year for supernatural success. Hey, real quick, family. I want to give a big shout out to Pastor Bill and to our entire uh, book club that, did a, that had a, an amazing discussion on this past Monday on our April book of the month. But I want you to get our May book of the month. Do you see that on the screen right now? I want you to get that and be engaged in our next book discussion at the end of this month. Again, another big shout out to Minister Ariana Anderson. Remember that we began this past Sunday in an amazing kids Sunday school class. I know so many were blessed by it. My kids loved it as well. I know yours did too. We're continuing that on this coming Sunday, and I want you to be a part of that along with our adult class. Looking forward to seeing everybody on Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless your family. I love you. We'll see you soon. Remember, stay in the current of God. See you Sunday.